hey, look, the sun's out, sort of. So, good morning. I just woke up. Me and Walker out here doing our usual thing. Um, day two of the Jody Arias um, cross examination starts in about an hour and ten minutes. So, we're just getting ready for that. Um, I'm going to be watching it and hopefully commenting on it because my uh, last Jody Arias video got such a good response. Um, I really want to do another one. So um, that's what I'm going to do today. It's probably just going to be a lot of that. Um, tune in to HLN and True TV for all your Jody Arias information. Um, there's a lot of analysis from experts all the time. So. Um, I'm not an expert. I'm not claiming to be one. And as I said in the um, video the other day, um, I only started watching it the other day. So I'm not claiming to know everything about the case, but I can comment on what I, what I see. So that's what's going on. And uh, somebody's jogging over there. But I can't believe the sun's out. Can you see that? I don't even know if I'm pointing to it because it's uh, too bright. So, I'll see you guys in an hour and ten minutes. Okay, so there's 12 minutes left until uh, today's court day starts. And I um, can't wait. And I am dressed up for the occasion. Well, at least I have a tie on. So, I am courtroom ready. Okay, so cross-examination is going on right now, but I had to just turn on the camera because I really believe she's starting to unravel because should I mute this? I should probably mute this. Hold on. Okay. So because only because she's running out of lies, she's running out of excuses and he's, I think he's really starting to get to her. I can see her almost breaking down at one point. So, um, we'll see what happens. Um, I, I've been taking notes on other things I want to touch on, but I just really wanted to say that right now because, um, I could, I could just see it. I could just see it. And, and she, like, I could hear her voice cracking that she, um, she's starting to back herself into a corner. So, that's what's going on right now. Right now they're in a sidebar um, with after some powerful testimony, but uh, she's uh, she almost not breaking down mentally per se, but she is kind of almost crying right now um, after some very powerful words from Juan Martinez. Um, I'll talk more about it when I go through like a rundown, maybe after everything is over. I'm just taking like a bunch of notes right now so I can just put it all together and. Um, you know, kind of put some little points uh, for those who can't watch it during the day or for those who don't even know anything about but are now interested in what's going on. But I think they're coming back to court right now. But here, look. You could tell she's trying to pull herself together, but her her nose was red and I could tell that she was almost going to cry. So, um, just more, like, as they get more and more detailed about the actual murder. So, Yeah. He's getting back into it, so I'm going to go. Okay, so um, court is in noon recess, so I'm going to see if I can get through my notes now so I can clear all that, whatever I wrote out, and um, go fresh af from afterwards. There's a lot of notes here. This might be a long um, vlog. I hope nobody minds. But So Juan Martinez comes right out of the gate saying, so do you have a problem? You have a, don't you have a problem with the truth? Or the quote was, you have a problem with the truth, don't you? Because in the last session, she kept on saying, I don't remember, I can't recall, I don't recall. But during the um, direct examination, she had no problems remembering or, um, what happened. But um, I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, she, They showed her a... Um, a, a taped police interrogation and <laughs> at one point she goes I guess it depends what help means which reminds me of the Bill Clinton trial when he goes it depends on what your definition of is is um, she does admit to lying to, I mean she has admitted to murder and she does admit to lying to the police and she says those because she was ashamed and scared um, but not 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 of 
not scared of him, but scared for herself and for her reputation and for her family's reputation. So, um, and then he keeps bringing up her memory because she'll say, I don't remember, I don't recall, stuff like that. So he keeps bringing up the fact that you don't remember anything. Like, what is wrong? Like, why can't you remember anything? You have said these things. So then that always makes her backpedal. And, um, um, I, I, throughout my notes, I'll talk about, like, the, the Twitter reactions. Um, I actually quoted, um, the ones that, um, were kind of against the, his, uh, the way that Juan Martinez, uh, is approaching her. But for the most part, a lot more people are for him going at her aggressively. Um, they're, it's a lot more one-sided than it was the other day. The other day, it was like kind of half and half. They're saying he's too aggressive, he's not getting to the point. Um, and today, there's a lot more people who are loving the way he's going at her. I think everybody's getting really sick of um, just how how she thinks she's smarter and getting away with this. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. So, um, at this point, this was early or early in the day where somebody actually said that he's being too abrasive. Um, and then at one point, um, he had asked her something about her, why she did it or anything. And who else would know? And she said, God, only God. And then Juan Martinez said, God's not here. We can't subpoena him. And she goes, I'm not sure. And he goes, you're not sure? Like, really? You think we could, like, subpoena God to the courtroom to testify what was going on in your brain? So, everybody really seemed to like that. Um, and now, um, he started really poking holes in her story, going, like, basically lie by lie. Um, the day of the murder and the days after the murder. Um, yeah. And I, I, oh, Sorry. Um, I'm whole, I don't have the tripod, I'm holding on the monopod, so if I'm shaking a little bit, that, that, I'm sorry about that. Um, I think that she was, she kept on trying to throw him off by saying, I don't understand, or I don't remember, or I don't recall. Hmm. Yeah, I said that. Um, and he's, then he brought up the fact that during direct, as I said before, during the, um, direct examination, she had no problem with memory, with talking about Travis Alexander and their sexual exploits. She, like, was all, talking about all this, these things she did sexually with him, but when it comes to other things, she can't remember a thing. But she had, she remembers so many details about other things. Um... Oh, and then I went into, I saw a second tweet not liking the cross-examination, cross but um, I said, I think this person is um, just being impatient because they said, not liking this cross so far, just nail her with the obvious inconsistencies and get back to the murder scene. But it's important that he goes through every single detail. You know, you have to be thorough. It's a murder investigation. One little thing can change the outcome. So I think it's very important that he's going... Um, you know, step by step and going through every single thing she has lied about and catching her in that. Um, another powerful uh, thing that he said was um, she was talking about how she kind of wanted to cut herself or try to kill herself and she just cut, nicked herself a little bit with the razor and she stopped because it stung. And he goes, um, can you imagine how much it must have hurt when you stab Mr. Alexander in the chest? Um, it was, it was objected and sustained, of course, but it's still powerful. It did make her, um, kind of cr start crying a little bit. Not too much. Her nose got red. Her eyes got a little teary. So you could tell that shook her up. Um, then he starts getting into act the actual day of his, uh, of his, of the murder, of his death. And then we get into the third person who doesn't like Juan Martinez. The way he's talking to her, it says, Juan Martinez need to quit being such a asshole to Jody Arias. He's not, he's just screaming, screw that dude. So, um, that is, that was the third person that didn't really like the way he was going. Um, but as I said, most people were all for it, but I did want to just highlight the people who had a different opinion because I think that's important too, because you don't know how the jury is going to react. Um, uh, da, 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 da. and then, 
Somebody else said Jody Arias is getting aggressive with Juan Martinez. The Arias jury seems to still be on the side of Martinez. So that was just another take from it. Um, and then the, somebody coming from the whole opposite thing, they're saying he's being too abrasive or whatever. And then this person goes, um, uh, the Jody Arias lawyer needs to stop trying to baby her ass, she needs to quit being treated like a victim because she isn't one. I don't necessarily agree that she's being treated like a victim at all. He, I don't think he's babying her at all, but that's just, as I said, that just goes to show how there could be so many different ways people can look at the, the what's going on. So, um, I, I made a note that she keeps trying to put what she has said in the past and everybody else, like saying, based on what I was told, and then, um, like, she kept on saying, um, she kept on trying to say she didn't remember what was happening, but because this is what she told, that's how she remembers. But then, after Juan Martinez questions her on it, she will admit to, yes, in fact, yes, I remember, I remember. Except for killing him. She still, you know, she still kind of didn't admit to it, but I'll, I'll tell you something later that, that kind of contradicts that, that I hope he'll bring up, um, sometime. Um... And then I get the fourth tweet that disagreed with the way he's going about it. Um, Martinez needs to get to the point. The more Jody Arias leads him all over the place, the less effective he is. And that's not the first time I'll see something like that. Um, and then she's told, I say she's told so many lies, she doesn't know how to answer anymore. Like, there was a, there was a point where he had asked her something and she just sat there and blankly stared like, not at him, but kind of away from him, because she couldn't say anything else. She, she, she has no more lies to say. She, you know, she's just, she's just caught. Um, and then I said, when questioning, questioning her about when she had blood all over her, he asked her, didn't you know that was Travis Alexander's, uh, blood? And she just would not give a straight answer. Um, when she doesn't want to admit knowing something, she will say, my mind wasn't right. Saying that will not make this trial go away. You still have to answer. Like, she, she was sitting there thinking, if I say, my, I don't remember, or my mind wasn't right, that, that he'll just move on to something else, and he's not moving on to something else. He will ask and ask and ask until he gets an answer from her. And he will ask until he gets the answer from her he's looking for. Um, one, oh, I put... 131, um, our Eastern, uh, she starts crying, and he, I forgot what he had asked her, but, um, he, she asked her because I had never killed anyone before, which is suspect because this whole time it was like, oh, I don't remember, I really wasn't there, but then she, she was running away scared because she had never killed someone before, because, so that, proves that she knew in that moment that she had done it, even though she keeps trying to say she doesn't remember. Um, now I lost my place. Uh, and then he went into, why did you leave him to die? Did you know he, like, he would ask her if he, if she knew he was dead, and she said, not really. And then he would be like, then why did you leave him there to die? And then she would be like, I didn't know. And then... It was like, but didn't you kill him? And she was like, yes. Yeah. So she, he's like, then you knew she was dead. He was dead. And then she's like, not really. I don't. Rem I can't really explain what's going on in my head. And then, but she knew. But that just kept going back and forth, and um, that kind of, that kind of got her um, crying again. And then that was when she just broke down and just wouldn't answer for a bit, for a couple seconds. It wasn't too long, but it was enough to get the message out that, um, things are not going the way she thought they would. Um, then there was a f um, there was like a fifth tweet that was kind of against, not necessarily against the way he's going, that Juan Martinez is going at her, but this tweet says, I think Juan Martinez can't even remember his question, it's cause he's getting so worked up thinking he's caught her, and one juror is all, all it takes. Um, so that's just another, um, and then some, and then two tweets came out in a row saying they think that Juan Martinez is confusing the jury. Um, I, I don't know if that's really true. I don't really see that. I think, um, 
you can, you know, if they're, if I'm taking notes like this, the jury's going to be taking even more notes than I'm taking. I think they're going to be able to follow along. I think they know what's going on here. So I don't think that's a problem. And then I think uh, something that was brought up, um, she had that, the Travis Alexander's grandmother that raised him, she actually sent her flowers. And um, he was kind of asking her, and then she was also calling around and asking for information about about his death and stuff. And the prosecutor, or Juan Martinez, kept saying, like, why are you doing these things? You know what happened. And she kept trying to say, it's, I didn't really, or I, but you know she was just trying to um, give herself an alibi. That's all she was doing. But um, the, I think he got a little uh, worked up at the end there when he was, when he was trying to get answers from her. And... Um, the defense wound up uh, objecting, so, um, and then they went to, um, recess, where we are right now, and then the last thing is, um, I've already touched on this, but this is a self-defense case, um, she, she, the whole thing is she said that she stabbed him, or she killed him because that he was abusive towards her, and, and, um, there, there was no mention of that so far during cross-examination and I think she's so caught up in trying to take the blame off her trying to to figure out what lies she's told trying not to look so bad that she's kind of oh yeah like there's no mention of the fact that she was scared for her life and I think that is a big thing and I hope he touches on that more but um that's what I have so far for today. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'm going to continue to take notes for the rest of the day, and then I'll come back afterwards and do more of a rundown like this. So thank you for watching. Okay, so they're going to be in about a 20-minute recess, so I'll just go over with you what I've kind of written down so far. Um, wow, that other part was 13 minutes long. I can't believe it. So this is going to be a long vlog. But um, So the first thing they talked about during the recess is uh, Beth Karras, who was in the courtroom at the time. Um, she said that the jurors were taking notes and paying lots of attention, and lots of them were watching Juan Martinez. I, it's v I'm... Anytime anybody talked about what the jurors were doing, I made sure to write it down because I think that's really important on how they're reacting to what's going on. Um, so then there was like a really long sidebar, like I think it was like a half hour, and I don't know what was going on, what the reason was for that, but that that's what that's what um, the afternoon session kind of started with. Um, so then I we got our sixth um, person that was kind of not really in favor of how Juan Martinez is going about his um, case. Um, she, they go, uh, Jordi Arias is no victim here, but she could just get off if this prosecutor doesn't get his shit together. He wants an argument. So that's how somebody is perceiving it. And then I kind of put um, the six and a half one, because it wasn't really negative towards him. It was kind of just... Um, it wasn't really negative, but it wasn't positive to the way that he's doing it either. Um, they say, Jody Arias, um, oh, Juan Martinez needs to stay focused, slow down, and make his points. Don't lose the jury and all the uh, minutia. So, and I called that six and a half. Because that wasn't really negative, but it wasn't really positive towards him either. Um, so then we start off the afternoon um, playing an interview from 48 Hours about how she wanted... Um, Travis's family to know what happened like she said like it, like they deserve to know what happened but yet she wrote an 18 page letter to them talking about how these two people killed him and, it, and so she like it was just more and more lies as she has told um he then he start then he starts getting into the fact that she said that he abused her and that's kind of why she did it um so um, we went back to the journal entries that we kind of went through before because he's just getting her to verify, you know, to clarify these things really didn't happen, did they? The, you didn't write them down in your journal. They really didn't happen. There's no proof. You didn't tell anybody. You didn't go anywhere. Um, so there was kind of like a back and forth. Of, like he, I, he was really trying to get her to, to admit that, that they, it really didn't happen and she wasn't really going for it, but he was trying really hard. But she did admit some things that she didn't last week when we were going through um, the journal. 
Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I also meant, uh, somebody else said that the jurors are watching Martinez, um, hand the original journal to the defense, and most are looking down and taking notes. Um, da -da 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 -da. I, I did make a point, I understand where he's coming from, like, with the journal, but sometimes you just don't write everything down. Not saying that she, not, her not writing it down means that she's not lying. I totally believe she's a liar, but, you know, uh, you don't write, you don't write everything down sometimes, but that's, that's here and over there. I think she's totally um, making everything up. Uh, buh, 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 buh. And then the way she's, um, it's just, uh, this is what I said. He's bringing up the journal again. I'm not sure how important it is just because you don't always write everything down. Doesn't mean she's not a total liar. Today she's getting, he's getting the answers out of her that he wasn't getting on Thursday regarding the journal. It just takes a lot to get a straight answer out of her. And even when you, he, he does get an answer, it doesn't mean it's a straight answer, but it's better than what it, you know, her trying to dance around it. And then I said, I'm no expert, but she should be told how to answer a prosecutor. Not sure if there's an actual rule about it, because she doesn't like to answer him. She'll be like, of course not, or I don't remember, or she won't actually, she won't just answer yes or no. And the, she keeps doing that, and she keeps kind of side, trying to sidetrack him by saying these things and saying what door are you talking about when, you, when it's obvious what he was talking about. And I just don't understand why... Um, the judge is kind of allowing her to dictate how the, how it's going, but then I also um, said um, he's trying to rule out the fact that he abused her. Slap he at one point she said he slapped her on the side of the head or the neck. She kept he kept saying head and she kept re, uh, saying neck. So it was just it's just her way of um, controlling everything. Um, and then I said, the fact that almost every time the defense objects um, and asked and answered, the judge overrules, which shows that she doesn't appreciate the wishy-washy answers. So that I, And then I said, I kind of answered my own question there. <laughs> so then we got seven, the seventh tweet that was like not so about um, how Juan Martinez is doing it. It says, Juan Martinez, world's most boring prosecutor, yammering on and on. I think he likes the sound of his whiny, own whiny voice. I'm not going to comment about that. Um, and then seven and a half about um, Juan Martinez. The prosecution for the Jody Arias case is going crazy. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, so then he brought up some text messages that he also went through on Thursday um, just to get the correct answers from her again. Um, she's not being as combative today, um, but he still has to pry answers from her. Um, he's bringing up some of the things that he brought up on Thursday, I guess, trying to get a better answer out of her, getting her to admit she's lying about the abuse. That's, that's just my assumption of what he's doing. Um, so this, all this kind of goes under the question, did, did you perceive there was any danger to you when the day that she, um, the day that she killed him? Because... He starts going back and trying to get her to, um, like, oh, okay, so you said at one instance he was chasing you down the hallway, he grabs your wrist, and, and then what did he do? And all she said after that was he, he kind of grabbed her wrist and, like, pulled him, pulled her towards him and, like, wraps his arms around her. So that's not really abusive. Even though at one point she said that he had broken her finger, which, um... Juan Martinez is trying to prove that did not actually happen. Um, and then she's trying to say that she's trying to say that it was what she was thinking about when she was angry with her that day, the day she killed him. So then she said that that was, I'm sorry. <laughs> she said that that's what she was thinking about that when she was scared, but then um He's asking her about another time where he was, um, he, they, I guess they were in an argument and he kind of like hits his hand against a door frame and then he kinda, he goes upstairs and he's like hitting his head against a, a door and um, that was August of 2007 and there's also no proof that it happened but he's trying to say was that what you thought about when you killed him and she kind of said no. So now she's not really uh, admitting to what it exactly um, snapped in her head that made her fear for her life. So I think that 
that that that my, that's my analysis of what has all. It's been confusing because they're kind of jumping back and forth, but I think that's basically my analysis of um, what this line of questioning is going through. That that the fact not even if these things did happen, which they that there's no proof that they did happen. It wasn't enough to really um, make her fear for her life. It's, to, to stab this guy 27 times, slit his throat, shoot him in the head, that's a lot. That's a lot of something just for somebody that, that you know. So, I'm sorry. I'm trying to feel the words, but they're not coming to me. But um, now they're in recess, so that's all that's happening. I'll take more um, uh, notes during the next portion, and I'll get back to you then. Okay, so this is going to be my last um, analysis for today. It's going to be short. I didn't take that many notes, but um, when we get back from recess, we go right back into where um, they're talking about he was hitting his head against the door back in um, August of 2007, and um, she said that he she wanted to go see... Um, what he was doing, because the, the banging noise was kind of um, worrying her, and when he, when she got to him, he turned around and said, what do you want, and he had the face of a madman, and um, he grabbed her wrist, yanked her towards him, put his arms around her, and like squeezed her, basically gave, you know, gave her a hug or whatever, and um, this is the event that sp was sparked in her mind when, the day that she killed him, and... Um, <clears throat> Uh, Juan Martinez is like, you knew nothing was going to happen because nothing happened on August of 2007. Why did you, you know, why would you think of that when you knew nothing was going to happen? Why did you kill him because you knew nothing was going to happen because nothing happened that day? And, um, she goes into the fact that, um, she, she went to, not after he broke my finger and, um, choked me unconscious, which there is no proof that that actually happened. So, um, she's trying to say the reason why she was scared for her life is because that incident, the, the, the made-up incident, I'm putting in quotes, um, the made-up incident that, um, happened. So, um, then there was, he was saying there's no proof, he didn't tell anybody, and we already talked about this on Thursday, and all of a sudden she goes, she talked to, um, Matt, uh, McCartney, which is her ex, about it, which I think this is the first time um, it's been brought up that she actually told somebody. I'm not sure, because I didn't watch the direct examination, so I'm not sure if it was brought up then or not, but um, he, I don't think he's co corroborated her story. But uh, then they start, get, they start talking about if she a phone call she had with him, and then she said that she didn't have a phone call with him. It was really all confusing. They kept going back and forth because she didn't really want to answer, and she was confused, or she was avoiding answering, and then he was trying to get her to answer, and then there's a lot of objections. So that whole situation was very confusing today. Um, and then they bring up the 48-hour uh, interview with her where she said she tried calling Matt, but couldn't get a hold of him, and I think after they started talking about this phone conversation, she finally said, I don't, I didn't call him, when actually she did call him, and who knows if she talked to him or not, but in the interview she said she couldn't get a hold of him. So then I have, this is my seventh and three quarter, I would, I would like say negative about, um, Juan Martin, it's not really a negative, but, um, it's more about somebody just wondering how the jury is. Um, so they go, no question she's lying, but all the back and forth is confusing. It worries me how the jury is taking this in. So, I mean, I can understand where that person's coming from. So then we go back into her 48 hours interview where she explained why she's smiling in her mugshot. Um, and she says she thought it was funny because it felt like it was just, like, in the TV shows. Um, also, Travis would, f would, um would do a smile like that if he would be in a similar situation. And then, um, it was like a little, you know, thing to him. And then, um, also because she knew it would wind up on the internet and that she w was innocent. But then she, and then she said in court, not in this interview, that actually it would be because she would be dead because talking about trying to kill herself. Um, 
but she didn't mention that in the interview. Um, and then the last part, the last, I have two more tweets that were against um, Juan Martinez, um, which would be eight and nine. Um, uh, they go, what the hell's wrong with Martinez? It's a yes or freaking no. Stop giving her open-ended questions. She's making you look like a stammering baboon. And then the ninth is, um, Jody Arias is making this lawyer look like an idiot. I'm curious to see what happens. So, but all those, I was religiously watching the Jody Arias hashtag on Twitter, and those were the only negative-ish things about prosecution that I saw today. Um, Thursday, there was a lot more. It was more 50-50 or maybe like 60-40. Um, but today, th it was only nine. And those, you know, those half ones, you know, it could be iffy, just um, not negative against him, just worried. So that's what happened in court today. And um, tomorrow I will do more um, analysis. I'll take my notes like I did today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, thumb, thumbs up, and comment below on your um, take on what happened in court today.